in some of the third person shooting video games you have seen that there is a mechanism of aim and ads and these both are controlled by a single button if you just want the script you can go to the stamp else i suggest you to watch the full tutorial so godot provides us these three key features that is action pressed is action just pressed is action just released so using is action just pressed or is action pressed at a time will not provide us aim and ads logic so keep watching the tutorial to understand this logic so here I have this basic FPS scene with our player, our flow. Our player has a node called handgun of type spatial and it's approximately placed where a player hand should be. If you go to project, project settings and the input map, you can see I have added a action called RMB and it's set to right mouse button. Next we have our scope scene with the main type as spatial and two mesh instance attached to it. The first one is our scope mesh, the second one is our scope lens. The reason why we are keeping both of the mesh separate, it's because we will use our lens layer property in our screen when we zoom in or zoom out. Next add a sprite 3d node as a child of main node, rename it to crosshair. Next in the texture slot, drag and drop your crosshair texture and then place it properly so that it's near the lens. You can even scale the crosshair if it's too big. Next properly align the crosshair so that it's in the axis of the horizon. So once you're happy with your placement, Select your lens. In the layer section, uncheck the layer 1 and click on layer 2. Next, save your scene by pressing Ctrl S and rename it whatever you want. In my case, I am naming it to Holo. Next, for the gun scene, we have a main node of type spatial and a mesh instance attached to it. Select the main node, add a spatial node, rename it to scope. Next, select the scope and properly place where a scope should be. It's just a roughly reference. Next, select the scope, click on this icon and search for Holo or the scene which you have saved for your scope. Click on open. Our scope size is too large we will scale it down so that it matches our gun and also the rotation once you are happy with the scaling select your scope node and now properly place the scope in my case i am just placing it here next save your gun scene by pressing ctrl s i have named my scene to gun.tsen Next, select your main node or main scene, select the player handgun, click on this icon and search for gun, click on open. Again, I will scale the gun down so it matches our player. Once you are finished with the adjustment, just make sure that your gun is placed properly by selecting the camera, click on preview. In my case, I think it's in a good position. So when your camera is selected, you can see we have a parameter called FOV and changing that makes a camera zoom in and out effect. This property we will use when we scope in our gun. The default FOV value is 70. Next, attaching the aim and ADS mechanic or logic to our gun is waste of time. Just because our game will have lots of guns like pistol, AR or sniper. So writing the same script for every gun is time consuming even though you can copy and paste the script but still you know what I mean. So rather than attaching the script for every gun we will attach the script for our scope. Our game will have 4 to 5 scopes and we will just write the script for each scope. Writing the script for 5 to 6 scope is not a big issue even though there are other complex ways in which you can write a single script and attach to every scope. But in this demo I will be attaching the script to our scope. If you don't want the scope and still want the aim and it is logic then you can just write the script for a special node and attach it to gun. Next select your scope main node, click on this icon, change the template to no comment, click on create. At the beginning we will export 4 variables by saying export with our variable name and it's set to vector 3. Here we are exporting 4 variables with our aim initial, aim final, hand initial and hand final. This will store all the position of our hand and aiming. Next if you select the scope main node you can see here we have 4 slots and it's set to vector 3 type. Next go to your main scene, select the camera, click on preview. Now select the handgun node in the transform section, copy this three translation to our scope hand initial point. Make sure our XYZ are properly matched with our hand XYZ translation. Next change the translation so that you have a proper zoom in effect. Remember that don't place the gun too near to our camera just because zoom in parameter will be controlled by our camera but not our gun. Once you are happy with the placement, again copy the translation to our scope and final position. Once you are done with that, again place the gun where our hand should normally be. Next, select the camera under transform section. Change the translation value so that you have a third person shooter controller. 
In my case, I am roughly placing it here. Now copy the translation to our scope aiming initial parameter. Once you are done with it, again change the translation value so that you have a nice aiming position. And again copy this translation value to our aiming final position or parameter. You can even rotate the camera but again you have to create a separate parameter for that and for this basic tutorial I am just using 4. Next again place the camera to a third person shooter position. This is just a roughly position so don't worry about it. Now we will provide the reference for our camera and our hand. So write on ready war camera equals to dollar sign and the camera path. Here the path for me is getting the fourth parent and that is 1, 2, 3 and 4 and again going down to camera. So to get the parent of each node we will use double dot with forward slash and we are doing it four times so I am writing four times double dot with forward slash and again going to camera. Your scene may have something different so just make sure you provide the proper camera path. Next we will provide the reference for our handgun and that is getting the third parent first, second and third. Now aim and radius logic can be created in two different ways. First one is using variables which in turn we need to on and off in every line and doing that is more frustrating. And the second way is by creating state machine which is simple but powerful way. So to create state machines we will use enum. Enum is short for enumerators. So to create enums write enum scope. Here enum is same as writing a variable but enum does not change or you can say it as constant. So here we are passing four values. The first one is aiming, the second one is not aiming third one ADS and fourth reset. Next create a variable called ADS and set it to false. So creating the separate will be useful for us when we scope in as ADS and scope out. Next create a variable called current action and don't assign any parameter. Next create a function called scope with the parameter delta. Next if input action just press RMB and our current action is not equal to scope dot aiming and our current action is also not equal to scope dot ADS then we will create a timer and this timer will check if we want aim or ADS logic. You will understand this line after we write few lines of code. So next write if input is action press RMB which means we are saying it to aim so write current action equals to scope dot aiming. If we don't press the RMB then we will set our current action to scope dot ADS. Now if you understand this code it will check once if we press the right mouse button then our button is kept on press after 0.1 second then it means our player need to aim else after 0.1 second our action is not pressed then we will set our correct action to ADS. Next we will make our ADS to true. Next if our correct action is aiming and we have not pressed RAB button which means we need to reset the aiming mechanic or we need to set our current action to not aiming. So write current action equals to scope dot not aiming. Next if our current action is equal to ADS and we have just pressed RAB button and even our ADS is true then we will set our current action to scope dot reset. Reset just means we will undo our all actions. Next to implement our aim and radius logic we will check what our current action is. So if it's aiming then it will do aiming. If it's ADS then it will do ADS. If not aiming then it will undo our aiming and if it's reset then again it will undo our radius. So to match the current action write match current action. If our current action is matching our scope aiming then we will change our camera position to our aim final position and we want our camera to change its position smoothly so we are using lerp function. Here lerp function just changes our first parameter with our second parameter with the time we provide it. Next if our current action is scope not aiming then change our camera position to our aiming initial point. Next if our current action is ADS then we will change our camera position to the origin of our camera and that's basically here. Make sure that you have entered your proper translation value of your camera here. In my case the translation values are 0 so I have just entered 3 zeros. Next after placing our camera we will move our hand to our camera position. 
so right hand origin to our hand final position with our speed next we will change our camera fov value to make a smooth zoom in effect and here my fov value i am setting it to 40 you can set accordingly to your scope or how much you want to make zoom in effect next after zoom in effect we want our lens to become invisible so write camera dot curl mask equals to camera dot curl mask and two here two means we are just unchecking the camera layer which means we will remove all the objects which are present in our layer two and in our case our lens is present in layer two and our camera will remove our lens next if our scope is reset or our current action is reset then we will change our camera position again to our aiming initial position and again we will change our hand location to our hand initial position next again we will change our camera fov value to our default value which is 70 in our case and again we will save our camera to add our layer 2 to our present layers here we are not adding our layer 2 by mathematical operators as plus but rather we are uniting our layer 2 with our present camera layer here we are using set operator which means we are adding our layer 2 with our camera layer using plus symbol here won't work so make sure that you use a slash next to be at the safer side if our current action is not matching any of this one then we will say underscore here underscore means if any of this not works then work this one and when this one works we will just simply say it as pass next we will add our scope function to our physics process function so write function physics process and the parameter is delta and again we are calling our scope function by passing the parameter as delta so if you're in the scene now you can see our aiming and ADS logic works correctly and if you watched my previous tutorial then you will be knowing how to create this crosshair and here you can see two glitches the first one is when we ADS or scope in you can see our crosshair is visible but we want our crosshair to become invisible when we ADS or scope in and the second thing is when again we get to our final position you can see our camera is clipping between our player which sometimes can become a big issue so to solve this both go to your script and create a reference for our crosshair in my case my crosshair is this one and i have renamed it to control here i have a simple dot texture so that i have a simply roughly reference for our crosshair to make the reference for my crosshair write on ready wall variable ui and here i am passing the reference for my crosshair and that's getting the sixth parent node and again going to control node or in the ADS script write ui dot visible equals to false and we again want our crosshair to visible when we go to our not aiming position so in the scope reset write ui dot visible equals to true now let me clear the code you should wait now to fix the camera glitching after we set our current action to scope dot reset write camera dot origin equals to vector 3 and here these three parameters are taken from this position to avoid any glitching we will just save our camera to scope out from our this position and here the values are this one and it will slowly move from this position to our aiming initial position so that's the reason why i have passed the three parameters here next at last select a scope node copy the aiming initial parameters to our camera location parameter or our camera transform parameter so once you're done with that run your scene now you can see we have a proper aiming and ADS logic and even our crosshair becomes invisible when we zoom in. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching my tutorial. If you have any questions you can comment me below. Do like the tutorial, do comment, do subscribe, press the bell to join the game development with me and always have a great day.